What I found horrified and angered me to such an extent that I took action. We were lied to and lied to big time. Before I knew it, I went from a normal college student to the political guy at the party to one of the guys that brought you the first internet blockbuster, Loose Change. The film would not only change my life, but countless others as well. If you've ever seen Loose Change, the documentary about September 11th, conspiracy theorist documentary, it is oh, riveting. Yeah. Like, you watch it, and by the end, not even the end, 10 minutes yeah, in, you're, you're like... you got your car packed, your head... <laughs> <laughs> you're just like, oh my God, it's all true. So every place, there's questions coming from this documentary. And you don't have to believe everything in the documentary to still have questions come up. And you look back and you remember what you saw and what you were told, and now you have questions. We got the boogeyman out there. Wow. See, for many years it was communism, then it was the war on drugs, now it's the war on terror. All through our life we've had to have a boogeyman. Loose Change took the truth about 9-11 into the mainstream with over 100 million views and allowed me to travel the country and even take on some of my detractors. The answer is no, they cannot. Jason, I think it's, it's telling that every time you disagree with something, you call the people a liar. I'm not calling anybody a liar, sir. I'm calling you a liar because you are a liar. But if we were lied to about 9-11, then who was really behind it? A lot of people on the web were pointing towards the new world order, but that was impossible. I mean, the Hulkster couldn't be involved, could he? So I set out to find out if the new world order really existed. And if it did, what was it? Who was involved? And what were their goals? The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. Some cringe when they hear the term New World Order, despite all of these prominent people using it. The world that maybe some people dreamt of at that conference back in Bournemouth when it looked as if maybe history would end, that liberal democracy would triumph, that free market economics would slowly progress and we'd have a new world order. And together they helped to create, were the principal leaders in creating, a new world order and a winning strategy in the Cold War. We are part of a new world order. And as the recently departed Admiral William J. Crow once said, it's long on new and it's short on order. Walter Isaacson wrote a wonderful book about some of the wise men who helped shape the new world order following the Second World War. As we devise a way forward in Iraq, I urge the international community to embrace its responsibility for creating that new world order. A new world order based upon collective action. The transatlantic partnership was never just the foundation of our security. It was the foundation of our way of life. It was forged an experience of the most bitter and anguished kind. Out of it came a new Europe, a new world order, a new consensus as to how life should and could be lived. 
And just like that, it was gone. It was the, it was a new world order. That's what President George H. Bush said. Harvard historian Francis Fukuyama pronounced the end of history. In fact, when it is used, that person is often dismissed out of hand because of the perception that it is nothing more than a conspiracy theory. Actually, the idea of global governance in a one world order has been around for centuries, and the term new world order has been used frequently in recent history. The new world order means different things to different people, um, but to those who expect to be in control of it, it means the same thing. It means all the world under their control. They believe that somebody must rule. After all, people are too darn dumb to know how to rule themselves. They figured that that's their role. The first in-depth publication of note was Samuel Zane Batten's work, The New World Order, which was published in 1919. Under the cloak of Christianity, this order speaks of a new world rising and advocates social control over all people and all resources. It promotes a world federation with a world parliament, an international court, and a global police force. Some of its goals are as follows. Community. The danger and loss in crime and degeneracy. The determination to make community life safe, sanitary, wholesome, and moral. Industrial. The disappearance of class distinctions and the solidarity of all interests in the economic process. National. The conception of the nation's welfare as the supreme concern, with the policy that everything shall contribute to this end, and every person must do some useful work. International. The creation of an international mind with a world consciousness and a world patriotism. The destruction of every arbitrary power that can separately and of its single choice disturb the peace of the world. Well, government is good, right? It put an end to war. Well, it could put an end to war because you just only have one dictator. <laughs> I think Adolf Hitler had that in mind. He wanted a world government, too, uh, with himself as the master leader. Many have regarded Hitler as the apex of evil, a true heart of darkness. But how many people know that Hitler had his own vision of a new world order? Hitler had been promoted by the establishment. He graced the cover of Time magazine many times and was their man of the year twice. His vision was simple, unify Europe and then the world. The only real difference was that his order was racially motivated instead of being based solely on religion. He even wrote a lesser-known follow-up to Mein Camp in 1928 that many have dubbed My Order, or New World Order. President Roosevelt would condemn this order prior to World War II. Nazi forces openly seek to establish systems of government based on the regimentation of all human beings by a handful of individual rulers who seize power by force. Yes, these men and their hypnotized followers call this a new order. It is not new, and it is not order. The idea of globalization was so prominent in Nazi ideology that the 1936 Berlin Games would be the first time that the Olympic rings would be displayed prominently and promoted in order to glorify the Third Reich. This symbol represents the five major regions of the world, Africa, America, Asia, Europe, and Oceania, interlocking and coming together as one. This one world philosophy still defines the Olympic Games today. Australia, hello and welcome. One world, one dream.